In just two steps, anyone can draw an owl. Step one, draw some circles. Then we've got a circle and another circle. Step two, draw the rest of the funny owl. Yes, hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery, where today I'm diving into the world of live stable diffusion. Yes, you too can create masterpieces in almost real time, thanks to the power of Krita and Comfy UI. But look, Ma, there's absolutely no spaghetti. This uses LCM, so if you've already got Comfy UI, then you will be halfway there. If, on the other hand, you don't even know what Comfy UI is, then don't worry, as this will just install everything for you. You get all the benefits of an app like Krita, such as all these different brushes and tools and everything you normally get with a painting package, and almost anyone can scribble, uh, even a rodent. Moving and posing skeletons in real time is also another thing you can do and adds quite a new dimension to your image generations. It does so much more too, but for this video, I'm simply going to focus on what you need to get this up and running in order to generate images in real time. But before we get too carried away with all the fun stuff you can do with it, it is worth making sure you've got a computer which can run stable diffusion. Thankfully, the requirements are a pretty meager 6 gig for VRAM, and with regards to OS, either Linux or Microsoft Windows is a good choice, with experimental support for Mac OS also being available. You'll need Krita installed for this, which you can do via a single click in the free software store on Linux, or you could do it via the Krita website as well. Links are down in the video description. 5.2.1 is the current release, which is also the version they recommend. I'll give you a second to do that now if you need one all done. Excellent. With Krita installed and running, you'll need to check one bit of information before you add in this new extension. So head on over to settings, and then the first option there, configure Krita. Over on this right hand side, you've got the resources tab, and that resources folder, the whole path there, is the thing that you need because that is where you're going to unzip the plugin. The plugin you can download from the GitHub page. There it is. Download the plugin, like it says, unpack into your PyCreta directory, which is this one we just saw here, the resources folder. Once you've done that, it should look something like this. So there is my resources folder, and it's got the AI image diffusion file. That's the configuration file, and also that directory there, AI underscore diffusion, with all the files in. The next step is to enable the plugin, and this involves a few restarts of Krita. So go ahead and restart again now that you have unzipped that archive, and then head back into settings again and configure Krita, but this time you're going to scroll right down to the bottom where it says Python Plugin Manager. Now yours will be unticked, so there, AI Image Diffusion, so what you want to do is tick that and then click OK and restart Krita once again. We'll start with a new image at 512 by 640, as that is a reasonable size for both Stable Diffusion 1.5 and for image generation speed. Okay, now you're going to need to have this show up first of all, and that's going over to settings. Make sure you've got show dockers ticked, and then this dockers menu, AI image generation, the one at the top there, if you tick that, then your docker will appear. Now, as you can see there, it's saying connection attempt failed. Click below to configure and reconnect, which is exactly what you need to do, whether you've got Stable Diffusion installed already or not. Here under connections, it'll be on local server managed by the Krita plugin by default. And these are the two options. You can either have it manage it or you can manage your own local server. 
If you're going to go with the local server managed by the plugin, this is the easiest option and the best one if you don't already have Comfy UI installed because this will download everything for you. It's about 10 gig in total. As you can see, you've got lots of options you can tick. Stable Diffusion 1.5, XL, lots of models, which overall is about 10 gig. All you have to do then is click Install wait for it to install and you're done. You can move on to the next video chapter which deals with plugin options. If you're already very comfy, like me, I am a very comfy nerd and that means you'll already have a bunch of models and stuff and you don't want that option so choose this other option, connect to external server, local or remote. Now you can see we've got a problem there, error connection refused, that's because I haven't got Comfy UI set up yet. Back over on their GitHub page under the optional custom Comfy UI server, you'll see this link here. Please check the list of required extensions and models. For this version, which is 1.7.1 at the moment, there are four custom nodes you will need. They're listed under the required custom nodes section. You'll need some control net preprocessors, IP adapter, Ultima SD upscale, and external tooling nodes as well. If you've used any of my free Comfy UI workflows from the A Very Comfy Nerd website, then you'll likely have three of these installed already anyway. Whatever the case, the easiest way is to install these using Comfy UI Manager. It's got a search facility, so there I'm searching for the external tooling. Obviously, I've already got it installed, but that way you can install all of the extra nodes. Along with those custom nodes, you'll also need the models they list as required. I already had everything apart from the specific upscaler they use, and likely you will too, as it's all pretty standard stuff. Now, one thing to note here is how it handles model names and directories because some things are fixed, such as these LCM LORAs, while others use a substring search to match part of the default file name. This means it should find all of your .bin or .safe tensors files as long as the file names don't differ too much. If you are having issues with it not finding any models, then the troubleshooting section at the bottom there is available for help. Like it says, open up the client.log file to get more information about what is happening. Because the log file is in a directory which starts with a dot, you've got to make sure you have show hidden files enabled, otherwise it will look like it isn't there. So there it is, dot logs, and you've got the client.log and server.log in there. Here is my client.log file, and as you can see, it's nicely listed all the files it found for the control nets, IP adapter, and LCM. If you have any errors in here, those should indicate what you need to fix. Okay, with all the nodes installed and their models in their rightful places, ensure Comfy UI is up and running. Then when you pop back into here, back into your server configuration and click connect, this time it should go green and say connected, leaving just a few other bits to explore. Other than your connection options, there are a few other things available. In the styles menu, this is where you can do things like change the model, LORAs, prompts, and VAE, all very standard stuff if you're used to stable diffusion. Click these tiny little arrows down here and you'll see even more settings. Personally, I'm absolutely fine with the defaults, but if you like to tinker, that is where you can. Diffusion, interface and performance, I've also left on the defaults with Diffusion having some selection options. Interface has some prompt settings and performance has some options for history and also for different devices. As mentioned, I basically just leave those all in the default automatic is absolutely fine. With the plugin installed, Comfy UI running and all of your options set, it's time to get drawing. For live mode, you can click the tiny little box up there and you'll see the option for live. You've also got a strength bar, the denoising strength there by default at 30 and a seed which you can randomize by rolling the dice. 
The cursor is blinking there, ready for me to enter a prompt. So let's enter one, which is awesome. Now, prompt in place, we can just click the play button and we're ready to rock and roll. Marvel at my art skills as I deftly wield my digital brushes in order to create a masterpiece. Okay, so are you ready? First of all, let's make this brush a little bit smaller. Let's go down to six. And uh, yeah, let's see if we draw something like this and then um, maybe if I give him a little hat, there we go. Now, as we know, rodents have nearly perfectly triangular faces. There we go. Now, this isn't looking very much like a rodent gentleman yet, is it? Well, this is where the strength bar comes in. Now, if we go all the way up to one, obviously it's gonna change the image completely. So I like it a little bit lower. Typically, you know, somewhere around 50, 60, 70% is pretty nice. Around there, it's sort of got a, a bit of a sort of cartoony, sketchy feel to it. And the higher up it goes, more photographic and realistic. So that's pretty cool. Put the little legs on, have him waving his arms about. There we go. All far too much fun. Maybe if I color the hat in, it's going to give him that hat. Oh, yeah, that's more like it. That is more like it. See how smart that hat is now? And if you think that's cool, then it gets even cooler because if you remember, you can use all of those control nets in real time as well. Just as an example, if you add a new vector layer, there's a tiny arrow there, add vector layer, then we'll add a new control layer as well. Select pose from that. That'll give us a little button over here. Add character pose to selected layer. There we go. And then we'll get the character over there. So we can select all the bits and pieces. He, he's over there at the moment, but now he's over there because we've just moved him. And then we can move him again. Or we could make it a little bit bigger. Let's have that character bigger. Or we could uh, duplicate it as well. Let's copy and paste. And then we've got, we've got two people in the picture or maybe one's a little bit smaller or at an angle or who knows. Uh, you can even click on the little joints there as well. As you see, uh, we'll move that dot up there and then move the little elbow. We'll, we'll zoom in and we'll move that one up there too. And you know, any little part of the skeleton, you can just move those legs out and have all sorts of funny things going on. We can even scale it strangely too. <laughs> Okay, let's clean all this up and start over again with a little bit of scribbling. We'll get rid of that. That's all nice and clean because another fun thing that you can do is just do sort of freeform scribbling without any prompts. Now, I understand that most of you won't quite be up to my skill level here. So if you're trying to emulate this at home, you may have some difficulty, but don't worry, just try your best and the program will try its best too. As you can see, it's sort of interpreting it over there and you know, it's it's not done a bad job. There we go. Let's give him some feet and we'll have some little paws up there. And there you go, we've got like a kitten and it hasn't even got a prompt. So you can just let it interpret your drawing and well, see how good you are and see how good it is. <laughs> If you're happy with your generation, you can click the copy the current result button and that will send your image over, allowing you to carry on changing stuff such as, I don't know, coloring the eyes. Maybe you want red eyes or something. Let's make that big and uh, ooh, not, not quite that big. There we go. Let's have some red in the eyes. There, we want it a bit more, a bit more evil. Now, it hasn't changed very much, but don't worry. If you change the prompt strength, it will eventually pick it up. There you go. So now we can copy that over. It's got red eyes and I can draw within the lines now. Excellent. Brilliant. Got some slightly rosy cheeks there too. As you can probably tell, this is absolute bucket loads of fun and there's loads of other stuff you can do with it as well. This real-time drawing just being one very small part. For example, it could be that you've already got an image, maybe a face or a character or something, and you'd like to somehow integrate that into your stable diffusion art. In that case, this next video will show you a really quick and easy way to do that.